Over the last few months, the topic of using some ifs with arrays has come up a number of times. And I thought, you know what? If some people are struggling with it, it means that some other people probably are as well. So let's create a video and really understand the problem and how we can solve it. Now, while I'm using some ifs throughout this video, it equally goes for some if, count if, count ifs, and all the min, max, and average variants of those functions. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by working through an example and trying to see what the problem really is. I'm going to start here in cell G3, and I'm going to use the V stack function, V stack. And what I want to do is to stack my data one table on top of my data two table. So I can V stack, select my table, data one, comma, and then my second table, data two. I'll close that bracket and press return. So I now have an array which spills into cells G3. So G3 is a spill range. Now, if I want to use sum ifs with this, I can put equals, sum ifs, open bracket, the range I want to sum is those cells from H3 to H18. I want to sum based on the cells from G3 to G18, and I want the value where it is equal to Bravo. I'll close that bracket and press return, and that gives us a value of 148. Now, what happens if we add a new item into our data to table? So I'll enter Bravo with a value of 5,000. Our VStack function has updated. We can see Bravo of 5,000 at the bottom, but the SUMIFS range has not expanded. Let me undo those additional values. So instead, we might want to use dynamic arrays inside our sum ifs function. One function we might use for this is choose calls. So if I were to enter equals choose calls, open bracket, if I select my G3 hash, so that gives me the full spill array, I'll enter a comma and let's say column one, I'll close that bracket and that now spills all of those values from our VStack from cell G3 hash. So that means we should be able to go equals sum ifs, open bracket, choose calls, and we want G3 hash, and then we want to sum the values from column two. The next argument is the criteria range. So choose calls again, open bracket, G3 hash, and we want it from column one. And then we'll close that bracket, press comma, and we want to match with our cell here, so cell K5. I'll close that bracket. This should work, shouldn't it? I'll press return, and it says there's a problem with my formula. Now this error message isn't particularly useful. It doesn't really explain what the issue is. The issue is that I've used arrays. I'll click OK on that. Let's now look at the formula arguments. You'll see that each of these arguments, it is a sum range. And it is, are the actual cells to sum? That's the same for the criteria range. It is a range, is the range of cells, which means we can't use dynamic arrays inside a sum ifs function. Thankfully, there's lots of other options that we can use. So let's investigate some of those. There are a number of special functions that when they return values, they don't just return values, they return the ranges for those values. One of those functions is index. So that means that if we use index in the right way, we can use it to create a range. So let's see how we can use index in this scenario. We'll start with equals, sum ifs and then open bracket. We're then going to use the index function. So index open bracket. We're going to use G3 hash, okay? So G3 hash is a range reference. We want all the rows from that reference. So the second argument will be zero. And we just want column two because we just want the values. So I'll enter a two in there. 
The second argument for some ifs is the criteria range. Again, we'll use another index on G3 hash. We want all of the rows and this time it's column one. And we want to match that where it equals Bravo. So the value in K7. We'll then close that bracket and press return. And this time it calculates a value. If we add a new item onto the bottom of our table, you'll see that our formula now updates. And this is because we have our table that creates an array, which then using G3 hash puts that onto the face of our worksheet. So G3 hash is a range. We then use index, which returns a range of those values. Now, what we can't do is to change G3 hash for VStack because VStack is an array function. So if we use VStack in there and replace that in the second instance of index as well, you'll see that that doesn't return a meaningful value. And that's because VStack takes those tables and changes them into an array. So if we have a range that we're working with, we can use index to pull out the values from a dynamic range. If we want an alternative version that works entirely with dynamic arrays, we can use the filter function and then wrap that inside the sum function. So here in cell L2, I'll type equals filter, and we want to filter the choose coles of G3 hash, and we want column two. Then I'll close that bracket. And we want to filter column two, where the choose coles of G3 hash, column one, where that is equal to K9, so the value of Bravo. We'll close that bracket, that will give us a filter of the results, and then we can wrap that in the sum function. So we'll wrap that in sum, and that gives us our value. And equally, if we get new values, that formula now updates. Because this works entirely with dynamic arrays, it means we can take our VStack and place this inside our formula instead of using that spill range. So now instead of referencing G3 hash, we can just use the values directly from that table. So using the filter and sum combination, we can work entirely with dynamic arrays. We create exactly the same result as some ifs, but we don't have that restriction around some ifs only working with ranges. Earlier, we said that some ifs only works with ranges. Well, that's partly true. Any time that we have the criteria argument of our sum ifs function, that can be an array argument. What I've got here in cell K11 is a formula that gives us the value from this first column of our VStack. It then gets those unique values and then sorts them. So this has now created a spill range. If we take our sum ifs function and copy that and then place it into this range here, but rather than K7, we're going to reference K11 hash. So we're going to reference that spill range. When we press return, some ifs will now spill a result for each of those items. Now, what about our filter and sum scenario? So here in cell K16, I've created this unique list of items from that first column. Let's take our filter and sum. And to copy that and then paste it into cell L16. Now, rather than K9, we want this to reference K16 and we want the spill range of this. So K16 hash. So that doesn't calculate the correct value. It gives us an error. I've got a previous video about this. So make sure there's a link. You can follow that and find out more about why this happens. But if you have this situation, then the solution is that we can use a by row and lambda combination. I'll use the by row function. 
we want to use K16 hash as the range that we want to look at. And then we want to use the lambda function. So lambda, each of those rows that's passed in, we will refer to that as R. And then we replace K16 hash with R. We can then close that bracket, close that bracket as well, press return, and that will now spill those results. So if we have a sum ifs function, which is spilling results, it means that we have to use this quite convoluted by row lambda sum filter combination just so that we can get that same end result. But this function is entirely based on arrays and does not use any ranges. Now, wouldn't it be great if there were an even easier solution for this? Well, there is, and Microsoft have only recently announced it. It's the group by function. Group by effectively groups values together and then performs an aggregation, such as sum. Well, isn't that exactly the same result as using a sum ifs? Let's take a look at this group by function equals group by. Open bracket. The first argument we want is the row fields. We can use choose columns, open bracket, and G3 hash, and we want column one. We'll close that bracket, press comma. The second argument is the values. So again, we can use choose calls, G3 hash, and we want column two. So, so far we've got our row fields and our values. The function that we want to perform is a sum function. We'll close that bracket, press return, and that now gives us our values. So alpha, bravo, charlie, and delta, and all of the values related to those items. Now we have got some totals in here. So let's look at these additional arguments. So field headers, we don't have any field headers in our formula, so we'll put a zero for that. And then the second argument is, do we want totals? And then to a zero for that to also say that we don't want any totals. Because this is all based on dynamic arrays, we can, as we've seen previously, we can use our VStack and replace it directly into our formula over the top of G3 hash. There we go, perfect. Just going straight from our tables into our formulas, performing that sum ifs calculation, but using group by with that sum aggregation. And there you go, that's it. That is how we can perform that sum ifs type calculation using ranges and arrays, possibly replacing with filter and sum. But if you want to spill, we then have this by row and lambda combination, which seems overly complex, but we now have the group by function that gives us a really easy way for us to perform this sum ifs type calculation using arrays. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.